chloroplast would be present in a cell of a chlamydomonas which is a unicellular green algae whereas 20 to 40 cell uh, chloroplast would be present per cell of mesophyll okay that that's how uh, variation in number would be present in chloroplast now for the structure of chloroplast as I told you already, chloroplasts are also double membrane bound cell organelles. They have an outer membrane which is less or rather which is going to be a more permeable whereas inner membrane is, that is going to be less permeable. So of course then the inner membrane would have much more carrier proteins in comparison to the outer membrane. Alright. Now inside the inner membrane you can see that these are certain uh, stacks just like the piles of coins, isn't it? like this, isn't it? So these are known as grana. Singular is granum, okay, grana. Now see, the grana has this single units together making up the grana, isn't it? So an individual unit present in the grana is called thylakoid, okay? And the space, if this is the thylakoid, the space between the two thylakoid membrane, this space is going to be known as lumen. Okay, lumen. Do remember that. It would be required in the photosynthesis chapter. Also, you can see that all the grana are interconnected to one another by the help of certain lamellar structures which are known as stromal lamellae. Okay, and all the grana and stromal lamellae is finally embedded in the matrix of the chloroplast. And this matrix of the chloroplast is known as Stroma. So mainly what is present in the chloroplast would be grana and stroma. Alright, now for a very important part, all of you listen very carefully. I have been telling you from the very beginning that chloroplast is a site for photosynthesis. It is where photosynthesis occurs. Now photosynthesis just like aerobic respiration is a very complex process or it has various steps. To make it simple for us to understand, we divide photosynthesis, the whole pathway, into two phases. Okay, One is called light reaction, when sunlight is entrapped and it is uh, converted to chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. And the second phase is called dark reaction, where using ATP and NADPH, finally sugar or food is going to be formed or produced by the plants. Understood that? First phase is light reaction where uh, sunlight is entrapped to make ATP and NADPH. Second phase is called dark reaction using where using ATP and NADPH mainly food is going to be produced by the plants. Alright, understood? Now chloroplast it shows division of labor. How? The grana is the part where light reaction takes place. Okay? Whereas the stroma is the part where dark reaction takes place. So that's how chloroplast shows a clear cut division of labor. Understood that? Fine. That much for uh, regarding photosynthesis you should know right now. Later on in details anyways we'll be discussing about the process in the plant physiology section. Alright. Now regarding the function it is the major site of photosynthesis. And of course, it is also going to store starch. All right. So this being said regarding the chloroplast, uh, I hope all of you have understood regarding plastids. Now, something very important and interesting regarding mitochondria and plastids both. Okay, something of a hypothesis that includes both the cell organelles. Now see, now you have learned that mitochondria and plastids are both double uh, membrane bound cell organelles and they possess their uh, double stranded circular DNA, uh, RNA as well as 70S ribosome. This double stranded circular DNA, RNA and 70S ribosomes, they are usually found in what kind of cells? Prokaryotic cells like bacteria. All right. Not only that, interestingly, the membrane of mitochondria and plastids also have very, various similarity with the bacterial cell membrane, especially because they possess porine proteins. Okay, So this kind of similarities between mitochondria and plastid and the bacteria kind of 
you know, uh, induces certain kind of hypothesis or certain scientists then believes that maybe mitochondrial plastids, they were prokaryotic cells which entered the eukaryotic cells to remain inside as a symbiont, okay, just as an endosymbiont. But later on, as per evolution, they became inseparable units. Understood? Because of various similarities found between bacteria and the structure of mitochondria and plastids, there is a hypothesis called prokaryotic hypothesis of mitochondria and plastids, based on which certain of the scientists they believe that maybe these cell organelles were actually prokaryotic cells which entered the uh, eukaryotic cell to remain there as a symbiont, okay, later on to evolve as inseparable units or cell organelles. Understood this? Clear? Alright? So do remember this important part regarding mitochondria and plastids. Also do remember both the cell organelles are double membrane bound and both can self-duplicate. They can, uh, you know, by binary fission, they can make a copy of themselves. Okay? These are important facts you should always remember about these two cell organelles. I hope all of you are clear about today's class. In the next class, we'll start with ribosomes.